In this video, I'm going to show several examples in which I verify trigonometric identities. We've already worked with the idea of simplifying trigonometric expressions. Um, verifying trig identities, in a way, are a little bit easier, uh, and in a way, there's a little bit more rigor and a little bit more challenge. So let, let me explain the difference. Um, with the trig expression, first of all, it won't be an equation. You'll just have something like 1 minus sine squared of theta, and you're literally just substituting things in that are equivalent, and you just try to write the statement in different forms, and um, you know, typically you're trying to get a statement that's a little bit more simple. Okay, Verifying trigonometric identities is a little bit different. Um, in actuality, these are really algebraic proofs, okay? And you hammered the idea of proofs in, in geometry. I, I know in our geometry course here, we spent half the year doing proofs. The most important idea in math beyond basic equation solving and, and that sort of thing is the idea of proof because if you observe some kind of pattern, you need to be able to show did I just see this work out a couple of times and you know it, it kind of works sometimes and it doesn't work all the time? Or is this something that I can always rely on being true? Okay, um, so that's the idea here. We're going to have a statement and it's a true statement. Okay, so this statement here is telling me that the sine of an angle times the cosecant of an angle is equal to one. Okay, it is a true statement. Just like when you wrote a two-column proof in geometry, they gave you a fact. They gave you a list of things and they said, prove this. And it was always a true statement, okay? You just had to figure out mathematically, how do I show that it's true? So I kind of like these problems in the sense that they start you off with the answer, okay? You know when you're done because you get that statement, okay? Now, where is this a little bit more in depth than, than what's happening in the simplifying trig expressions? This is asking you to verify it, okay? So this is a, a proof, okay? And in a proof, I should see every single step. Okay, and I'm in fact going to ask you to do this in a very, very careful way. I am going to ask you to only make changes on one side of the equation. Okay, pick either the right or the left. Sometimes it'll be obvious. Uh, sometimes you'll start on one side, it doesn't work, and you have to scrap it and start over uh, and do it on the other side. But, and sometimes literally either the right or the left, you could do it and it'll work out evenly. Okay, but I only want changes made on either the right or the left. Okay, so in this example, most of the time, take the statement that's more complicated and try to get it down to the statement that's more simple. So I'm gonna make my changes on the left, okay? I need to see each step. I need to see, I started with this, the next step, I replace something, here's my entire new statement. I should see an entire equation every single time. You don't have to write a bunch of sentences saying what you were doing, but I should be able to follow, oh, one thing disappeared and got replaced with something else, otherwise, New statement. So I should have an equation, another equivalent equation, another equivalent equation, until you get down to the end and you have the same thing on both sides. Okay? So um, in this one here, I know that cosecant's the same thing as 1 over sine. Okay? So I'm going to rewrite the statement. I'm not going to touch the sine. Uh, I'm going to write that as a 1 over sine of x. Okay? And I'm not touching the right hand side here. So again, I have a true statement. I wrote another true statement. We're going to keep going, okay? Uh, this is going to simplify down to sine of x over sine of x. If I multiply that together, um, that's equal to 1, okay? The final statement here, anything divided by itself, is equal to 1. So your final statement should always have the left side and the right side being equal to each other. And that's how you know I started with this, I ended with a true statement, this thing is, is a true statement, okay? So anytime I see a sine times a cosecant, if I want to say it's equal to one, that is totally legal, okay? So let's take a look at one that uh, maybe has a little bit more going on in it. Um, all right, the second one here that I'm going to do is the cosecant of x minus the sine of x is equal to the cosine of x over the tangent of x. Okay, again, there's no rule about whether or not the sine or the cosine is easier to work with. However, my experience has generally been that it's hard to introduce addition and subtraction into a statement uh, to try to work adding and subtracting into this over here. Uh, so I usually start on the side with adding and subtracting. Although again, sometimes you see something, maybe you see like a Pythagorean identity or something like that and you can replace something. So it's certainly not a hard and fast rule. Uh, but I'm gonna start on the left. And again, only change one side of the equation change it into the other side of the equation by substituting equivalent statements, okay? So, um, cosecant's the same thing as 1 over sine. Um, I'm going to replace it with the 1 over sine of x, okay? Uh, and then I'm not 
touching anything else. Uh, in general, you should be showing one step at a time, okay? So a true statement followed by another true statement, okay? Um, I would like to add these two fractions. I need a common denominator right now. This is sine of x over one. Um, so I'm gonna keep this statement the same. Okay, and the sine of x over 1, I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by sine of x over here. So multiply, uh, this, is, this is basically sine of x over 1. Multiply the top by sine of x, we'll get sine squared of x. Multiply the bottom, it's over 1, by sine of x. And now we have a common denominator with these two things being subtracted. Okay, and then of course we haven't touched the right hand side, so uh, everything gets copied there again. All right, when we subtract these, when you subtract with fractions, you keep your common denominator and you can add or subtract your numerators, okay? So we get something that looks like this, okay? And um, I know that one minus sine squared is the same thing as cosine squared. So I'm gonna replace that with a cosine squared of x uh, and I'll write that over a sine of x. And that's supposed to be equal to a cosine of x times a tangent of x. Okay, and I think I'm just about off the screen here. Let me see if I can adjust this down just a little bit. Can we, yeah. Okay, um, we can go just a little bit farther down here. All right, so um, this is the same thing as a cosine times a cosine on top. So I can write this as, um, well actually, um, uh, let's see what we got. Um, so I can write this as a cosine of x times a cosine of x over a sine of x, and that's equal to a cosine of x over a tangent of x, okay? And uh, I'm running out of space here, so I'm gonna go to another column. Um, so this is the th same thing as a cotangent. So my next line here would be that I have a cosine of x times a cotangent of x, and that's equal to a cosine of x over a tangent of x, okay? And um, basically now, hopefully you see where I'm going with this. Cotangent's the same thing as one over tangent. So I can replace that with a one over tangent of x, and that would be equal to a cosine over a tangent, okay? And of course, that's cosine of x over one times one over tangent. That's gonna give me a cosine of x over a tangent of x is equal to cosine of x over tangent of x. So I have transformed the left-hand side into the right-hand side. At that point, I've done, I've verified that identity, okay? And again, the big idea here is from each step to the next, I should be able to see this got replaced with that, okay? This got replaced with that. Uh, we combine these to be this. You should be able to follow from step to step. If you're doing two or three things in a step, you're not really verifying it. You're just kind of saying, well, I know I need to get to the bottom, so I'm gonna skip down there. So again, these are proofs. You'll know what the answer is, that helps. Uh, but you do need to show each step and the entire equation needs to be written each time.